So the high level level up summit is currently coming to an end, which means we are currently now getting access to a ton of new features that have been getting held up in labs for the past couple of months. My goal is to make sure that you have all of the new updates here in one spot to make sure this is the last video you need to watch on all of these new updates and changes so you can just wrap your mind around everything that's happening because trust me, there's a lot. And if you guys stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you six bonus updates that are coming soon that are not released to public yet. So just as a reminder, so you know where to actually see all these updates and how to enable or disable them, you're gonna go and log into your Go High Level Agency account. You're gonna go to the bottom left into your settings and then you're gonna scroll down and you'll see labs. You're gonna see the agency updates and then you're gonna see the sub account level updates that you can go through. Remember that a lot of these are beta which means that these are not fully released features. Make sure that you are only activating these new features onto either your personal account or a demo account. All right, so let's jump into this. The first thing we're gonna go over are the basic UI improvements and new features. So the contacts detail page is getting a full revamp. We can see that tags are up here in the top left. And overall, what High Level has gone ahead and done is try and just make things look a little bit more compact easier to read, easier to get to different menus and make it a little bit more functional, which I do think was a long awaited update. Next, I don't know why this took so long to be quite honest, but we can finally update contact photos. Uh, you can go ahead and add photos to a contact after you've already created the contact. Again, I don't know why that took so long to update. They must have had a database issue, but we're here now, we got it. Conversations now have a completely revamped UI and this one looks great. I've been testing with this for about a month now and it looks and works amazingly. The next thing, we also have hotkeys. So now you can go ahead and use shortcuts on your keyboard in order to do things like navigate between conversations, select multiple conversations, switch different panels and select conversations. So I think that's kind of cool. Conversations set and track respond time goals with SLAs. So if we look up here, we can see this timer right here. So if you have team members using a high level account, maybe they're in real estate or sales, you can now set an SLA timer on every single inbound message to make sure that those agents are responding to those leads fast enough. This is honestly awesome. And I love that it's integrated directly into this UI so that you can see those timers and you can see which leads are brand new, which ones haven't been responded to, and which ones need to be responded to as soon as possible. This is really cool, I like that. To enable this, go to conversations, SLA settings, and enable the SLA toggle. Nice and easy. Next, we're gonna go over some AI pricing changes. These are actually good changes. Honestly, when I first saw the title of conversation AI token usage based pricing, I figured, great. We're about to get screwed over by some uh, some inflated pricing on the LLMs, but honestly, this is good. So before there was a flat rate pricing of 0.02 cents per message, and now there is going to be a maximum of 0.02 cents per message until December 31st. Beyond December 31st of 2025, basically what's going to happen is that the usage or the cost of the LLM to be able to produce your message and interpret the inbound message is going to be billed to you directly. I don't know if there's going to be a markup on those costs, which most kind of providers will do that. Something similar to Open Router, where you are not using your own API keys, you are using high levels API keys, which means there could be some higher incurred cost. But nonetheless, honestly, it's probably not gonna be that expensive unless you are sending thousands upon thousands of messages per day, which is very few power users that are actually doing that. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Also, voice AI token usage-based pricing, same thing, you're gonna be billed by usage rather than a flat fee. Next here, I'm gonna go over the conversation AI updates. I think a lot of these were really good updates. There's more on top of this that are available, but these are the ones that I think are gonna be the most important. Number one is going to be conversation AI response to images. So we can see the sample image that High Level has provided here, showing that a user has sent an image of a house and the AI was able to look at that image and analyze it and then respond from the image. Now, the tricky thing with this is you're gonna want to use this feature carefully because the AI, yes, will be able to look at the image and analyze it and see like, for example, for a car detailer, how dirty their car is. You can set maybe in your agent prompt to say, hey, analyze the image on a scale from one to five on how dirty it is. Look for scratch marks, look for paint swirls, look for um, debris, mud, anything like that. And then what you would be able to do is have your customers send images of the vehicle to be able to correctly quote them. 
but this has limitations. So test with it and make sure that it's up to par to what your client or to what you need it to do. All right, moving on, we have a brand new Conversations AI V3, which is a new flow-based builder. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to really use this one. I do think a lot of other people will. I'm a big fan of having a single prompt agent and being able to allow the agent to have some kind of flexibility during its conversation or during its call with voice AI. So I'm not a big fan of having these strict conversational guardrails on it. But for those of you that are, you can now do that. Next, we have multi-calendar support in conversation AI, and you can add up to 50 calendars for these conversational AIs. This is going to be really good for service-based businesses, people like med spas. Maybe they have red light, a sauna, and a cold plunge. That means three different calendars for three different availabilities. So now the agent, for example, if a user says they want to go in for a cold plunge, you can go ahead and route that to the cold plunge calendar. If they're there for a sauna, you can route that to the sauna calendar. So now you can manage availability across different services. And given their new service calendar updates, this is going to be really good to use. Next, we're going to look at other AI updates. These are just some of the kind of miscellaneous updates that I don't think have a major impact, but nonetheless, they're really good updates. First is going to be the voice AI chat widget. So funny enough, this was the exact feature that I had built in Lovable, Cursor, and Supabase to win this hackathon with Lovable. And now it's really funny to see that Go High Level has gone ahead and implemented with it. Now, next one, we're gonna see the new AI email builder. This will allow you to build emails and email templates using AI. The cool thing about this that I like at least is that Go High Level's email builder and same with funnels and websites, they work with a block-based builder, which means now when the AI goes ahead and builds the email or the funnel for you out, you're gonna be able to go in and easily make changes and adjustments to it. But even if the AI generates a pretty garbage kind of template, you at least have some kind of structure that you can go in and start changing things. So it will save you time regardless. And if it is actually really good, which I will go and test these things later, but if it is good, then that's awesome. Same thing, of course, we're gonna see the updated AI funnel and website builder. And I actually did run a test on this. I have to say, <laughs> I'm not very impressed with the results. Call it all you want, call it your prompt. Hey, I got a, I got a certification in prompt engineering, okay? I know what I'm doing. This was not a great result. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be updates, but you do have to remember that when you are generating these funnels, websites, or emails, the AI has to think as if you are building the website or the funnel with the tools that High Level has available which means it is not necessarily coding everything together. It is on the back end, but visually, high level works off of building blocks. As you know, you can put sections on your website and then inside of sections, you have columns. So when the AI is building this, it is building all of those blocks. So when it comes down to your prompting, keep that in mind. Next, and probably the most important update of all of them is going to be the workflow updates. So we now have an advanced builder inside of workflows. If we take a look here, this is a project that I was kind of working on. I was just testing out what the workflow builder could do and what it kind of looked like. And you can see it looks very similar to N8N. This is an N8N project that I have set up where you can see N8N is based on these node trees and they have these very nice and smooth connecting lines so you can visually see how everything is pieced together. Also, you can add these notes and they are sticky with every single node and it's this big infinite canvas. This is really cool because I'm honestly not a huge fan of the previous and now considered standard version of the workflow builder where it was a vertical top down node tree. This honestly, I think is a much cleaner layout and a much more visually pleasing way to build workflows especially when it comes down to being able to set notes and they will stick to where you want them to stick to and you could put them behind your nodes. So this works really good. A few things with this too. You are also able to add multiple triggers within a single workflow, which means you no longer need to have one workflow to do necessarily one thing. So I could go ahead and duplicate this if I wanted to and then change the trigger. And now I have basically two workflows with two different triggers inside of one workflow file. Do keep in mind though that just as the same as the standard workflows, that one contact can only be in that entire workflow one time at once. They cannot repass through it if they are currently active in it. Now I need to advise you guys because I know and I know I'm about to see some absolutely disgusting workflows getting built in this because coming from the NNN world and seeing what people are building, 
this is going to happen and there are going to be so many help tickets the go high level help desk is going to be on fire for the next month here is just a sample of a workflow using the new advanced builder that i saw in the facebook group this is what people are going to be building all the time i advise please do not do this this is messy you cannot go in and figure out what went wrong and this is very difficult to look at and figure out what is happening and what connects to what just because it looks fancy doesn't mean it's functional always break complex workflows into multiple flows and always build with future iterations in mind add notes onto your workflow and build for errors if you look at this workflow that i have right here this is what my nnm workflows look like if you look at it, yeah, it might look a little bit complex, but realistically, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six steps. It's very simple, but I have extremely detailed notes on every single section of this workflow so that if something breaks or I don't touch this for a year and I come back, I can look at this and I know exactly what's going on and I can go in and adjust and change things. So always build with that in mind. Do not please do not do this. This is garbage. Moving on, we have a brand new mobile app redesign. This, it looks really good to be quite honest. You can see tasks, pipeline value on your unread messages, appointments, and now you have all these quick actions. And I do believe they're actually adding a lot more features into the mobile app. Cause as you know, the desktop version of the app has a lot more controls and features on that versus the mobile is a little bit more limited. It's more or less so you can see your data. So we'll see what else they change with this, but I think this looks really good and definitely an upgrade from what we currently have. Next, really quickly, these are just some cool little updates, especially if your clients use the service calendars. First, you can finally set schedules in calendars. Now here's the deal. Previously, before this was enabled, if you had 20, 30, or 100 different calendars and your client calls you at 3 a.m. and they say, tomorrow, you know what? I feel like changing my availability from 5 p.m to now being open till 8 p.m. And you have to sit there thinking about your life choices because now what you have to do when you wake up in the morning is go through every single calendar individually one by one and change the availability. It was terrible and I don't know why they designed it that way, but now this being added does put a fix to it because you can set a schedule and then you can select all of the calendars that you want to apply that schedule to. Next, payment tab and appointments and coupon codes. I just like this, that you can now use coupon codes. Again, a lot of my clients are in the service-based industry and they have been asking for coupon codes forever. And I've had to build all these weird workarounds for clients to use payment forms in order to just get coupon codes to work. And now finally, it looks like we can do that inside of service calendars uh, with appointments. Okay, and you have stuck around until the end of the video or you didn't have the attention span and you skipped here. But either way, I'm gonna let you guys in on something new. These are six updates that are coming very soon and these are non-released to the public. These are from internal team. So the first one is going to be a desktop app for high level. So you will now be able to quite literally have the app on your desktop instead of needing to log in through your browser every single time. The only downside of this, sorry, Windows users, this is likely only gonna be for Mac but we'll see if it ports over to Windows as well. I don't have all those details. Second, we're also gonna get video testimonials. Ad manager goes free, plus they are also integrating YouTube ads. Fourth, we're gonna get live streams in communities so you can post to your audience and you can go ahead and just go live straight from the communities tab rather than outsourcing to Zoom or Google Calendar or whatever else you might use. And next we have gift cards so that you can actually provide your clients with gift cards and they can give those to their customers. And as you guys know, if you are in the service industry, gift cards are absolutely massive, especially when it comes to the holidays. So this is going to be a big win. And finally, we have rental calendars. To be quite fair, I'm not very stoked on this, but I know there's a lot of people that have been requesting it. So there you go, you got rental calendars. And while you're here, if you're still struggling with just trying to get your clients to understand how to use Go High Level and navigate all the features, then I have built a app called onboardingwidget.com, which allows you to either build this brand new video library that works just like school, where you can add your videos in here, or you can also make an embeddable widget that looks like this, with beautiful drop downs, and you can add all of your own custom videos and buttons and resources in here so your clients have an exact spot to go to so that they can get the help they need. I would love to know what your favorite update is, so drop a comment down below and let me know what your favorite update is from this entire list. And I will see you legends in the next video.